Hi everyone, I'm Pei Han from UCLA and Cedar Sana Medical Center. It's my great honor to participate in the Porchin Pasarito Award competition. ECV quantification with CMRTY mapping is a powerful tool to characterize focal or diffuse myocardial fibrosis. Rodent models are widely used in preclinical studies of myocardial diseases because of the short development time and low cost. However, it is technically challenging to acquire high quality ECV maps in small animals because of the high heart rates and high respiration rates. In most current methods, ECG triggering was used to track the cardiac motion. However, it is unreliable at high field strength due to elevated MHD effects. Also, high heart rates may make the situation even worse. Respiratory navigation can help to reduce image blurring but would compromise acquisition efficiency. Furthermore, the setup of ECG and respiratory gating would make the workflow more complicated. In this work, we developed an ECG-free, self-gated ECV mapping method based on MR multitasking, which can capture multiple dynamics with continuous acquisition. In MR multitasking, images are represented as a low rank tensor. In this ECV application, it has two spatial dimensions and three temporal dimensions representing cardiac motion, respiratory motion, and inversion recovery, respectively. This framework has only been applied for human imaging before, and previous ECV mapping did not exploit relationship between pre- and post-galenium scans. Here we show the proposed protocol. It has two 4-minute T1 multitasking acquisition before and 15 minutes after galenium injection. The total exam time is around 25 minutes, including the localizer and waiting time. The data acquired from these two 4-minute scans were combined and reconstructed jointly so that motion states were estimated in an integrated way to ensure image co-registration and fitting parameters were considered together to enhance T1 fitting. DSS rats with HFPF model were used to test the feasibility of the ECV multitasking method. We have nine control 10 HFPF and 5 CDC treated rats. They were all imaged with a Bruker 9.4T scanner. For ECV value calculation, the septum and the aorta were used as the myocardium pool and the blood pool, respectively. Masson's trichrome stain was used to measure the extent of fibrosis as a histological reference. Five respiratory bins and ten cardiac bins were used for binning. This group of movies displays the reconstruction results from a healthy rat. These are representative T1 and ECV maps from the three groups. The average ECV measured in the control group, the half half group, and the CDC treated group was 18.0%, 22.4%, and 19.2%, respectively. T test showed that ECV was significantly higher in the half path group compared with the control group. Also, ECV was shown to be significantly reduced after CDC treatment. This figure shows representative histological sections of the control and half path rats. The myocardial fibrosis can be clearly seen as the diffuse dark blue areas in the half path figure. 
A moderate correlation can be found between the ECV value and the extent of fibrosis. His logical analysis of the CDC treated group is underway. In this study, 10 bins were used to separate different cardiac phases, corresponding to a cardiac temp resolution of 20 milliseconds for a heart rate of 300 BPM. However, for higher heart rates, such as in mice, more cardiac bins may be required. This can possibly be achieved by shortening the echo spacing or by acquiring case-based training line and imaging lines in separate echoes after each flash flip angle. T1 inhomogeneity was present in inferior and lateral walls caused by potential B1 issues at high field and high heart rates. In diffuse myocardial disease, it does not affect the ECV calculation from septal area. However, it will affect the accuracy of the ECV map in the inferior and lateral walls. Therefore, further sequence improvements should be made to address this problem. Possible solution includes a dual flip angle acquisition. We're also expanding spatial coverage with 3D volumetric imaging. In conclusion, we developed a CMR multitasking ECV mapping method at high heart rates, which can generate high quality ECV maps without ECG triggering or respiratory navigation. Elevated ECV found in the half path group is consistent with previous human and rodent studies and shows a moderate correlation with the histological data. Reduced ECV measured in the CDC treated group implies decreased LV fibrosis after treated CDC treatment, which is supported by histological findings in previous studies. Okay, uh, thank you for listening and questions are welcome.